Well, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, for all of you who were with us yesterday morning, uh, we had uh, a couple of handfuls of people and we did uh, our morning prayer meeting. Uh, we shot out an email to all of you uh, who call Presence Church home and, and advertised on Facebook uh, and Instagram and so forth about that. It was, it was awesome. Actually, it went from a men's prayer meeting to an international uh, all-in prayer meeting uh, as it was the first uh, opportunity that we've had to come together and really just taken uh, the bull by the horns when it comes to prayer um, during COVID. If you'd remember, uh, we started and initiated the men's prayer meeting on Tuesday morning, <laughs> the week before COVID started. And then because of restrictions, we just pulled the pin uh, to keep everyone safe. But we're going to continue that every Tuesday morning at 6.30 a.m. We had uh, Camilla uh, tune in from Brazil. We had Diego from Colombia. We had uh, a lady friend from Pennsylvania. Um, so we had people from all over the world and it was awesome to be able to invite them in. Uh, we had my dad this morning. He brought a great word and, uh, and a few other people, Pastor Steve, that brought a great word on what it is to pray. And then we prayed into that. So we did awesome. that uh, on Instagram. So uh, I just want to welcome everybody while people are still joining. Um, we're going to jump into it. Uh, I want to remind you that this week is uh, the celebration of Pentecost Sunday, uh, and we've done a few devotionals and talks around that, and uh, it's an exciting day. I'm looking forward to the worship. Um, once again, I still am sad and that we can't be together. It seems weird to just talk to a screen. It sucks. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> I'm over it. I'll be glad when we don't have to do any more Zoom meetings or whatever and whatever and whatever. But it's, um, you know what, it's opened the door for new reaches, uh, I suppose. You know, yeah, right. we, we couldn't have just done a meeting like this morning and had half the world touching in or from different planets. Um, but... I want to encourage you, uh, we have a guest with us, Pastor David Hall, uh, he leads a church in Adelaide, his father is Tim Hall, he's been here many times. And, Dave's uh, a legend. Yeah, even before I was around, so he's probably the funniest person I've ever heard from the pulpit, he's not afraid to say what's on his mind, uh, and even things that spontaneously come to his mind, but um, he's got a great uh, sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, it loves the presence of God, so it's, um, it's fitting that he'd speak into our world, and uh, people would say over the last four weeks we had Pastor Chrissy. Uh, we had myself, Pastor Chrissy, Pastor Lucas. Last week, um, I, I uh, surprised you with Chris Estrada. And then we've got Dave Hall. There's probably, apart from having a conference here uh, or at any church, you, you can't officially have voices speaking in via stream uh, four weeks, five weeks in a row. And um, so it's just been good to be able to do that this month. And I look forward to uh, championing um, just the cause of who we are as we go forward into June and July, depending on what happens with res restrictions. Uh, some of you are wondering, when are we coming back? Uh, the hope is a month, a month and a half. Have you heard anything? Uh, look, yeah, people are saying different things. You know, ever since this COVID thing came out, it's, it's been confusing it's all communication. Speculation. No it's one knows like, what's going on. This is, no, but this has happened. No, and like, so I guess, I don't know, it's close to the time we're going to hear. But yeah, I would assume it's going to be about a month. month a month. Yeah. So we're talking about now um, what we want to initiate. We want to do an 8 o'clock service, a 10 o'clock service, uh, and then go back to our 5 p.m., which is more of a, uh, it's still a service, but more a little bit more time allowed. So those two morning services will be an hour each with Kids Church. And uh, just, just we'll find a way or a platform that we can communicate so that we have, uh, if it is 100 or if it is 150, or, or whatever the case may be and we'll officially come back to live services um, we'll still be streaming when we have 100 people uh, so I hope you're well if you're just tuning in um, I just want to introduce uh, someone that's like a big brother uh, to me it was my pastor and still very much is uh, in many ways um, for many years and uh, I guess in a sense I have a deep found of gratitude for Pastor Michael Barrett um, for uh, for like I, I believe I wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for uh, Pastor Mike's heart and I shared that last week when I alluded to uh, the fact that Mike was going to be here talking because he has one of the biggest hearts um, for anyone I've ever met um, probably next to my mum and dad <laughs> and um, and uh, and I just love that Mike is uh, continuing on doing what he's doing so uh, without further ado um, in fact just before we ask Mike a, a little bit about his story um, I just said to Mike, one of the one of the main reasons I wanted to get Mike in, one, he's a good friend, he's uh, full of the Holy Ghost, loves the presence of God, so he carries the DNA of the house, and, uh, and, and like me, he came out of uh, this house, and I guess um, the last probably six weeks that we've spoken from uh, Kim 
to Letitia and Kent, to Pastor Lucas last week, Hannah the week before, um, my mum and Chrissy did the, the Q&A. Every single week, um, there's been an element. In fact, every single Sunday I preach, even when I determine not to, uh, transformation still comes up in the mix of things. And it's probably more than transformations. It's, it's, it's the affiliation that we have and life's uh, changed. You know, I think it's Jesus' heartbeat. Yeah. I mean, I always say it, and, and I go around the world um, just, uh, you know, I guess reminding people about the heart of Jesus for the broken. He said, I, mm -hmm. I didn't come for the healthy. It's not the healthy, it's yeah. the doctor, it's the sick. Mm -hmm. And he was literally a friend of sinners and tax collectors, awesome. prostitutes, you know, like, and so, uh, you know, that's what I love about this church is that it carries that heartbeat in the midst of the city. It still was Pastor Rich's heartbeat carried through that this would be a Holy Ghost hospital for the broken. Amen. Amen. And that's, um, you know, that can lead into the conversation. That, that comes with its challenges. Just this morning I went for a, uh, a walk and I went all the way up to the waterfront and, and got something to eat. And I walked past about a, a lineup um, outside of Starbucks and Cavalav, a lineup of people in their blankets and their trolleys. As I walked past, I had worship in my ears. Um, forget about the title. Um, my heart broke because these people, like it was freezing. I was wearing a jacket, my jeans and whatever. And, um, and I thought to myself, what can we do? And on the way back, I bumped into some of our crew. So, um, Adam, um, Adam, he's one of the homeless guys that we've helped out a lot and just, just spent time with. And, uh, and John, and he's, he's a Kiwi guy. He's come over. He doesn't get Centrelink. And I said, bro, how can we do something? What if I open up the foyer? Um, we're not doing anything. What if I open the foyer? And he said, oh. He said to me, he said, bro, I don't know if these people will respect it. They might make a mess and da-da-da. And mm -hmm. so it's this conflict of wanting to help, wanting to do something. And it's like, okay, where? And, and I want to ask you that question. Like you work with people in and out, um, day in, day out, that have the potential of leaving messes. What is it that that's the the breakthrough thought? What's the breakthrough attitude that you have to go, you know what, regardless, I'm just going to open up my building, my centre, my heart to this community? Well, I, I think, first of all, it's the call of God. And, and there is a mandate upon my life to do this. There's a grace for me to do it. Sure. Uh, in fact, you know, many of you would know that I, I planted a church, started pastoring a church, and realised that really just wasn't my grace zone. And I went, you know, I, I, I can do this, but it's wearing me out, you know. And But Transformations has never worn me out. It actually energises yeah, me. Yeah, well. And so um, I think there is a grace zone for a ministry to do this in the heart of our city, but also there it is the responsibility of every local church to be a part of it mm. and also to reach out to the ones and twos ourselves. I mean, yeah. we get a lot of referrals from churches, um, so and then they'll go back to their churches as leaders, you know. Um, That's awesome. and, and so, you know, I guess it's, we're like the recycle shop. <laughs> send them in and get them back <laughs> send them in and get them back better than what they can but yeah uh, uh, Jesus' heart was leave the 99 go after one yeah. I often say this that he hears he hears the cry of the heart of the suffering mm -hmm. you know Mother Teresa said this I see the face of Jesus in every dying leper when she was confronted by the Archbishop about what she was doing and, uh, and he said we don't do that as part of religion, we, we want to stay safe and we don't want to get our hands dirty. Yeah. We don't want to touch the lepers. We don't want to, because, mm. you know, but Jesus is, you know, he, leper come up to Jesus and said, if you're willing, he said, I'm willing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's what it took was, was that, that seeking after him. Um, so that's, that's, that's a platform we want to get to this, this part of the conversation. But um, I think there's a lot of people that would hear, again, from my language or from this platform, maybe even from the stream about transformations. A lot of people probably don't know what transformations is. Um, they won't know who you are. Um, I shared last week, and even as I alluded to before, you have probably one of the biggest hearts um, that I've met in people. Um, but the package, it comes in, you look rough, you've got the mohawk, you've got the bling bling. Yeah. Um, and I know you, so so it's not even, uh, you know, it's I know funny that that's who you are. judge a book by its cover, don't they? Yeah, interesting. And interesting. I, I, I kind of like that. I like that, you know, they can judge me at face value and, and there's, you know, I, I was going to put up a website, things so people say about Mike Barrett. <laughs> would, have, would have been an interesting one. But I think, I think and, and I want to come to that, I want to help people to know, because um, you guys... 
like transformations is always going to be part of my DNA and my blood. And and there was a season where God said, just focus on something. But, you know, even especially in the last uh, couple of months, I felt like God's saying, you know, and I shared with you part of our mandate here at uh, Presence Church is be to be a church that um, impacts the world through the message of Jesus, language of love, the heart of worship, a church that's raising leaders, that's discipling and transforming lives. And, and in essence, um, you know, as I said, there's we can go into the streets. Um, we're touching multitudes of internationals that are here right now, and we're doing things. But but to actually transform lives, um, you know, I felt like, and we're doing things in Russia with rehab. But I felt like the Lord said, you know, just go and embrace, and go and support, and go and help. And that's that's the beginning of that call and the mandate. Um, so we've begun that, but it all began somewhere. It began mm. with 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 Mike Barrett. So so right. who? For people who don't know who you are, or maybe even for people that that probably haven't spent enough time to just sit down and have a coffee with you, you made the made the uh, the comment that people probably judge, and I think it, like it's an observation. Big guys like us, you're a little bit bigger than me, probably not as muscly, um, <laughs> but a bit bigger than me. Um, but you know, pe- especially people in the church world, they're not used to being around tattoos. So much people, yeah, yeah, <laughs> people that are you know we just are who we are you know yeah. what i mean and we we carry and the way we walk and so forth but where did you come from how did um you get saved and how did you arrive at a place where you started the rehabilitation center of transformations yeah i uh, so for me i mean i grew up um in brisbane um and you know my parents were you know Blue collar workers, hard workers. Um, Dad was a firefighter. Mum worked in um, an auto auction place. And um, you were born in Papua New Guinea, weren't you? I was born in Papua New Guinea. Yeah, my wow. dad was a firefighter up there for ten years, wow. and, and then uh, I came here when I was two. So good. And um, that's why I've got a heart for crusades and everything in Papua New Guinea. Yeah, sure. Um, and so anyway, um, I mean, as I went through high school, my sister really became very successful model, and you know, she was very, uh, you know. I guess, you know, she was the hero. She was the one really excelling. Mm. Um, and um, and then I, as I went through high school, I was, I started to get bullied, you know. And, um, and I remember coming home from school one day and just punching a hole in the wall and just being really over it. So I'm not going back to school. And, and mum decided to put me in karate lessons. And so I started doing karate and... Um, and I really took to it like a fish to water. Martial arts just became like this this other place for me where I could escape. And my sense they took a real liking to me, and mm. and um, and so I became really good at that. And then I, you know, I that I found my identity in that. Sure. Aspect. Were you big at a young age, like tall? And I was tall, but I was yeah, I was really the chubby kid at school. Okay, I used to get bullied a lot, and. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so that sort of led me down a bit of a path where um, I would just answer everything with my fists. But I was pretty responsible still. By the age of 22, I was paying off my own house. Um, I'd done an apprenticeship as a chef. I had, um, and uh, I was running a karate school. So it was just like, um, I, for all intents and purposes, I was quite successful. I'd been dating this girl for two years, was looking at getting married to her. Um, but then I got in, introduced to amphetamines one night by a karate sensei and, uh, mm. and that was the beginning of something that for the next six years would just spiral me right out of control where I lost everything. Um, I went from you know, having this job at the casino in Brisbane to um, uh, basically I started drug dealing. I was a terrible drug dealer because I was too generous, give it all out to my friends and everything. And, and Use uh, and abuse. Yeah, and, 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 and you didn't. You didn't just jump and like start smoking weed at school, did you? When you say your sensei or your mentor, yeah, I, you, I, I it was an injection for, straight away, wasn't That's it? That's it. I tried pot, yeah. but um, I didn't like it. it. Made me feel paranoid. It, you know, yeah, it, it just really didn't make me feel good. And sure. so, but when I, yeah, and, and so I was off drugs. I just didn't want to, you know. And around that time, it was all the hallucinogens and then yeah. the hard drugs. Sure. There didn't seem to be much of a bridge between, between the two. It was either you'd experiment with mushies and trips and mm. pot or you would be into the heroin and whatever, you know. And so, mm. yeah, that, I mainlined speed and then went on to like full on meth mainlining it. And, um, yeah, well. And then worked my way up from my, de- from my mate to his dealer, to his dealer's dealer, to his dealer's dealer's dealer, you know, like all the way up 
to um, you know these pretty heavy dudes, and uh, and I ended up owing them ten grand, and then they came to collect one day, and um, uh, but that deal actually offered me a job, and um, wow. watching his back in clubs and doing home invasions and collections for him to cover the debt. Cover the debt first. I thought, yeah, I'll just cover the debt, um, and uh, and then I'll be done. But I actually got quite addicted to that lifestyle then. Was that the power? Yeah, Control. it was the power, the fear, the intimidation stuff. Um, and, you know, yeah, just living this life of anarchy, not answering to anyone really. And um, mm. So how did you get saved? So what happened is uh, I came down the coast and did a... Um, my, pa- my family did an intervention on me. That was the first thing that happened. Okay. My sister flew back from America and did this addict intervention. For those that don't know what an addict intervention is, like surprise party for the addict where they all confront the addict on their drug use. Needless to say, I wasn't really thrilled about the idea. Um, but then uh, I ended up going into rehab as a result, went into detox and went into a, this secular rehab and um, did nine months in that rehab and, uh, and then left. And uh, I was off the drugs, but I just had no purpose, didn't know what, you know, and I just had this big gaping hole in my heart still, didn't, didn't know what to do. And, uh, mm-hmm. And so um, I started doing 12-step meetings and I looked at the 12 steps like a pathway to God. And, um, and so I thought, oh, I'll go look for God myself. My first stop was the Hurry Krishnas down at Burley and um, used to have a boogie and a free meal with them. And, <laughs> um, and, and uh, you know, they were nice people, but they didn't have what I was looking for. Sure. So I moved on and uh, then went to the Buddhist temple, tried to meditate, and I've just got way too much ADD <laughs> to meditate. It just didn't work for me, so... Then this chick at the NA meetings, she, um, you know, I was quite keen on her and uh, she was into these crystals, so she gave me a crystal and wow. she said, if you get anxiety, just rub the crystal, you know. And I, I thought that's a point of contact so I can, you know, yeah, work, yeah. work in a little bit, yeah. Hook up. And, uh, and, but then one day I was getting this anxiety, I remember the crystal in my pocket and pulled it out and started rubbing it, rubbing it, rubbing it. And I think I was getting more anxiety from rubbing the crystal than the anxiety itself. And I just threw it away. I thought, oh, that's a rock. So what happened is um, a mate of mine was going to church and um, because he'd hooked up with this Christian girl and he said, um, he said, why don't you come to church? And I said, what for? And he goes, well, you're looking for God, aren't you? I said, God's not in church, man. I've been in Catholic church. Stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. Look at the stained glass windows. God's not in church. And he goes, well, this church is different, man. Just just try it out. And, and then he goes, what are you scared? And I went, it's a challenge. Yeah. Challenge me ego. So I thought, oh well what what can church do to me? So I went went along and um and and it was Surface Paradise Assembly of God back then. And um mm. and it was just on, on the tail end of of a revival where okay. Pastor Tim Hall had come for he was gonna come for six nights and stayed mm. for forty seven. Okay. And it's just I've heard the, many stories about this. On the yeah. tail end of that, uh, it was just and for me, it was like a freak show. Like I, I thought, well, at least it's entertaining. I'm watching these people shaking and rattling and rolling and on the floor and things and people dancing up the front and flags and banners and horns and all sorts of weird stuff going on. Wow. And it's I thought, nuts. I thought, man, these people, are, these people have got to be on something, you know. Like I thought maybe they were releasing something in the air conditioners or something, you know. <laughs> And uh, says so in Monaco Street. It was in Monaco yeah. Street, yeah. So and um, and I just stood right up the back, and I was very closed off, very judgmental, and, and I left that day and thought, oh man, off, that was weird. And um, but after at the end of the week, I was always assessing my level of peace and everything. I, and after being that week, my week was better. I couldn't explain it. My week was just better, and everything was going well. So I thought, well, maybe it's a bit of a good luck charm. I'll go back to church. And uh, I kept going for about six weeks until one day something significant happened for me. And I was standing in the congregation and up the back and, again, didn't want to know anybody. So you came for six weeks before you had any Yeah, nothing. Yeah, I just, it, was, it was working yeah. for me. It, yeah, sure. It made my week better. Yeah. Uh, later I realised that that's what the presence of God does. Yeah. You, we read about Obed-Edom and, and he just had the presence of God in his yeah, house yeah. And, he, and everything was blessed. Yeah. And, uh, and that was it. It was just like being in the presence, even though I didn't even know what yeah. the presence was. But I was standing in this meeting like I had week after week and, um, and I was standing there in, in the worship and, uh, and I felt this presence come 
over me from the top of my head down over my shoulders went right through my body down to the soles of my feet and it was like I was standing in a puddle of this best way I could describe it was like liquid love hit me from the top of my head down to the soles of my feet yeah wow and I was undone me I was like wow what is that never felt anything like that and I'm looking around I'm thinking did someone touch me did someone and I, I nudged the guy beside me I said did you feel that and he goes is this your friend that brought you yeah he goes feel what and um and, <laughs> and I described the feeling and he goes oh that's the Holy Spirit like like just a matter of fact that's the Holy Spirit like everyone you know it's just a normal thing everybody should feel I'm like no no I, I I'm trying to explain no this is what happened well that's the Holy Spirit I'm like how do I get more and I'm just like Ben the drug addict that was I just wanted more yeah. more 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 yeah. and at the end of that service the there was a, a guest evangelist, um, and, and he no, normally I would just go to sleep during the preaching. So like, wah, 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 wah. And um, but th- his words started to sink into my heart this day, and it was like if you know you know you're a sinner, and you know if you'd like to receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and and gave this altar call, and and in my head I'm going, no, no, don't do it. You'll be an idiot. You'll become one of them. And I looked around. I go. Yeah, you're right. But my heart's beating out my chest going, this is what we've been looking for all our life. Head's going, no. Heart's going, yes. Heart. Yeah, and, wow. And before on. I knew it, my heart had dragged me up the altar before my head could talk me out of it. And I, um, I was just on the, on the altar weeping like a baby. And, and uh, But for me, it was, I didn't even know that. That whole experience was like just this uh, incredible blur. And then they led me off to the side and they're like, you know, you fill in your details and want to keep in touch with you and I'm like no I don't fill in I'm not joining your club or anything and and I asked the guy I said listen how do I get more of that stuff that I got up the back of the auditorium and he goes what stuff and I said well dude called it the Holy Spirit can, how do I get more of that and um, and he's like oh, I don't know man I'm just doing my job you know can you just fill in the form I said no no man I just want to know where you get more of that stuff <laughs> Love it. And so, uh, you know, I kept coming week after week and I was trying to work out the recipe. I I'd, I'd think, oh, maybe if you clap, you get it. Maybe if you put your hand in the air, because I'm looking at all these people thinking maybe that's how they get the stuff and that's why they're doing what they're doing. And, um, and uh, but uh, nothing would work. And then um, I even did my own research. I'm coming up the front and just, you know, I'd see people on the altar and I'd give them a bit of a nudge and I'd go, hey, what are you feeling? And how'd you get it? You know, I'm trying to find out how do we, what's the recipe, because I knew the recipe for getting drugs. Yeah. Ring up the drug dealer, wait yeah, at sure. the bus stop, yeah. give them the money, get, some get the drugs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, anyway, after a while, I just put two and two together and figure out when you play the church music, the stuff comes. <laughs> 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 so I, I, um, I bought a little CD from the church, it was called Songs of the Revival. And took it home and I put in my little CD player and lay back on the floor and would just soak for like, I soaked for like three hours and it was wave after wave after wave of that presence and that stuff just all day. I'm like, wow, this is just mad. The most euphoric feeling and I'm like, everyone needs to experience this stuff. I'm just thinking, everyone does. So I went, I was still volunteering at the rehab that I did and I went back and I said, listen, we've got stuff at our place doesn't come up on the drug tests or anything you know like can come around and oh, come and have some yeah come around the streets and you know wow. inviting people and you know we got stuff you know not great. Right, mate we yeah. got this is better and um and the, the first <coughs> and the first day i think we had like you know 10 or 12 people around there and um and uh and it was just crazy. It was like, I, I didn't even know half the people coming into my house and so that's where like soak meeting started yeah, yeah wow yeah great that's how it all started, and, and I just push play and hope for the best. But I, to my amazement, everyone in the room was getting touched by the power of God. Come on, come on. Um, one guy even paid for a prostitute and brought her along to the meeting. That's you know, awesome. And, uh, and she got touched by the power of God and started weeping. And had this homeless guy one day, and he stunk so bad. Like we, we were all trying to get a little bit of our sleeve to try and you know pretend like yeah, sure. Know. And um, and one guy. He was a young Christian guy. He'd been saved a couple of weeks and he goes, Jesus is here in the room with us. And we're like, yeah, I guess Jesus is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
He goes, no, he's standing over there and pointed at the homeless guy. And I've never felt the heaviness, the heavy weight of the presence. To this day, wow. that moment in the lounge room was absolutely incredible. And all of a sudden, spontaneously, we started pulling money out of our pockets. People taking watches off, throwing it at the homeless guy's feet. Mm -hmm. And finally, we decided, some bright spark decided, well, maybe he needs a shower. <laughs> We didn't think of that before. Isn't, that it, isn't it crazy? Yeah. You know, like, and then, but, um, yeah, that was a bit of a revelation, whatever you've done unto the least of these. You, you do unto me. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. So you went from um, from there, and then eventually transformations that we've been speaking to was birth. Yeah, so what happened then is um, um, Pastor Gary Mack, who now pastors Metro, he was the associate pastor, and he sat me down for coffee, and he's like, I can, because what was happening, I, I, I'd, I'd have these meetings and I'd go, well, look, there's more stuff at the church. <laughs> and so then they'd so start coming to church. church. Some, yeah. Not all of them would, but some would come to the church and sure. then they'd get saved. But, it, they, you know, the, these guys are, are just so out there and they need full 24 hours, you know, because they go back to their brothels or go back to the drug dens or That's the all street they yeah. and uh, get swallowed up by it again. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was a little house next door to the church and um, it was empty. I had watched a, a, a couple try and do something with homeless people and drug addicts and, and they ended up just leaving and it all just went sour. Because if it's not, like you said at the beginning, if it's not your call, it's high burnout. Yeah, very high burnout. I mean, even, even in, in the world, let alone spiritual attacks, but in the world, it's the second highest burnout occupation next to nursing. Wow, okay. AOD and mental health. Sure. And so, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it was amazing because I just, I went to Pastor Richard and he said, yep, go for it. Um, and at the time they had to lease the block for the car park, but the house was on it. Mm -hmm. So I started using the house. Then that ended up being a blessing paying the rent for the, for the block for the church. And we, we were full in no time and then started another house and another house and another house. So we ended up with um, about about five houses. We had three guys' houses and two women's houses, and I was still working a full-time job. Um, I was working... Right from the early days, you had that many houses? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was okay. like a couple, in a yeah. couple of years. You know, we started the men's houses, and we ended up with three men's houses, and um, and that was... Uh, I th there was the D house, the river house. I think they called it the lighthouse up at Miami, and, mm -hmm. and um, that was full of men. And then we ended up with two houses for women, of which my wife, not at the time, but she started the first women's okay. houses. Great. And uh, yeah, and so, and I was still working a full time job, and then I felt God say, go to Bible college. So at one stage, I'm doing Bible college, <coughs> I'm doing a full time job, plus I'm running these five houses. And it's just a, it was a grace to do it. And, uh, and we're seeing so many incredible results. And you know, then. We, uh, I think, I, I ended up going to the Los Angeles Dream Center. Sure. And picked up some ideas from there. I was looking around different rehabs and uh, picked up three diplomas along the way, one in alcohol and other drugs, one in mental health and one in counseling. And... Um, That's no small feat in itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that That's was a God thing too. That was just crazy because... Um, really the government just recognised what I was already doing. Sure, and so it was uh, like accreditation for, for works being yeah. done. And it's funny because Pastor Richard encouraged me because I was going to do a diploma in counselling. He said, I, I, want, I, I really feel like you, got, you should do Bible college first. And because I put God first, I ended up with those everything three diplomas. Yeah. Yeah, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. Yeah. The, um, when did, so after the Dream Centre, was that when structure was added to it? That's when, yeah, we added more structure, you know, mm. um, and we added a daytime program because, you know, the guys would just go fishing during the day and we'd have, you know, various rules and it was more just organic discipleship. Yeah, Like okay. one person discipling another, discipling another. But then um, it, it became more um, structured with the word and everything and then, um, yeah, I came back from the Dream Centre, implemented all this. That's when we had the White House. Mm -hmm. Um, and and started that whole process there, and uh, and then that went on for another six years, and then on the ten year anniversary, um, 
not long after that then started, God was speaking to me about giving it to churches and sort of franchising it out. And, mm. and then we started expanding to different states. And so stuff. you're on last year, uh, was it last year? It was 20 years. Last year was a 20 year anniversary. Wow. Yeah. How many campuses do you have now? Uh, currently we've got four. So we did have... But there are offshoots of Yeah, we did have eight. Well. Um, yeah. What happened is, uh, you know, by, by nature, a franchise, the dangers of a franchise, if you grow too quick without the infrastructure, mm. um, it, can, it can go like this and then like back down like this. So one campus for 10 years, and the next eight years, we've planted eight more campuses. Yeah, that's great. And, okay. um, and so four... So one of those... Um, was just the church really didn't have the capacity to do it anymore and that was shut down um but and then three of them um we basically gave it away to those mm -hmm. people and um they're still doing a discipleship program today or a version of transformations which they've renamed as their own church okay all that. if if um you know just just if someone's listening maybe there's another church or a pastor or uh, maybe people are wondering um what the future looks like as i said we uh, in the in the time frame, and I don't, I don't want to call it a break period, but the Lord has has really opened up a door to uh, Russia, Vladivostok, Pastor Dania. We've got to introduce you. Mm -hmm. um, Pastor Dania is the bishop and the oversight for um, a group of churches similar to the ACC, uh, but he has offshoots. There is a farm that I've mentioned to you before, and um, just outside of uh, Vladivostok, about three hours flight, uh, where they now, they're fully self-sustained. There's no Centrelink, no anything. So they have um, about four or five houses. They've just overtaken a school where everyone comes and they supply the food um, and everything from the farm that they have that guys in the rehab work. And so they have a couple of acres of soy products, potatoes, right. cattle. They bake their own bread and they distribute it. They have to. like this, you know, mm. And it gets negative 40 degrees there. Mm. So I say that to say... Um, and, and so they do that, what they're doing, we're, we're partnering with them. But over here, so, so for example, if, if say Presence Church were about to start a house, um, what would it take to, to, like what does it look like for a church to start a campus of transformations? So I guess, I mean, again, it comes down to calling. Mm. And so if you're really called and, the, and it's such a burden on the pastor's heart to do it and they feel like this is what we need to do as a local church. Yeah. So we have churches that support us from the mission side, and then we have ones that want to take the responsibility of starting their own. Sure. So it's a, you know, it's a pretty big responsibility, but it starts out as a baby and it grows up. Okay. To the point where, it, you know, so we started out pretty simple. We've only got two staff to start it out. So on a practical side, you need a house. You need a house. Mm -hmm. And go through that step. Yeah. So we get briefly. A, yeah, get a house. Um, uh, we will um, deposit from our campuses that we have now, mm -hmm. current residents to develop the culture and give instant rent into that. Sure. Um, and that helps establish not just everyone coming in and assessment phase, but right. stage one, stage two. So there's some maturity in the house and That's knowledge it. of the program. Yep, then they can disciple each other. And, uh, and we give the whole, it's a whole system. And um, both electronically, um, intellectual property, training, mm -hmm. everything. It's a whole system. Um, and we give it to churches. We don't Great. charge it. Great. Uh, God told me, just give it to them. The only thing that we ask for is a tithe back of the residence program fee. So really it's the residence tithing, not the church. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and that all comes from, from government support anyway, because as exactly. a resident, you can yeah. get the pension or sickness benefit. Yeah, and, and they pay um, 80%, which is the standard rate for all rehabs. They pay 80% of, mm. um, of their Centrelink in. Now, uh, the, the course, the actual transformations course, the curriculum that runs through, is what we call evidence-based best practice. Mm -hmm. And so we have consulted with um, therapeutic communities all around the world, um, peak bodies of AOD um, organisations to um, get the best of the best knowledge, both biological, psychological, social and spiritual. So it's not just a, a fly-by-night little spiritual discipleship house. Yeah. Now, look, we understand that, that God is the one that does it. it and, and unless they get Christ, it's, it's, it's really hard to stay long-term clean. Mm. Even AA and NA and all those 12-step programs, they know that. And so... But it's, it's, it's everything. Yeah. They've got to learn how to function. They've got to learn how to 
communicate, manage conflict, you know, manage their anger, their stress levels, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because life throws so much stuff at you and even though your spirit is an anchor for your soul, when your soul is going like this and, and you know your brain still knows the place to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, cause it's because we're trying, yeah. Uh, Nathan, um, who worked as a counsellor down there, mm. spoke a lot into this and refreshed it. In my mind, we are trying. So spirit, body, and soul, or spirit, yeah. mind, body, whatever you want, whichever one, way you want to play on it. And often we get caught up. We were, I was thinking about this after Pastor Gary's last night, and we had that conversation. Um, and Gary's doing a great uh, conversation every night at Metro, 7.30 till yeah. 9.00. And uh, privileged to be there, but 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 we are like uh, more often than not, you can get caught up in the in the head stuff, and and if you're not mature in the things of the spirit or or even aware of the things of the soul, then you can actually be led away. Um, but we have to remember that we're whole. That that we're. I think I think the body of Christ as a whole is evolving in this way. Yeah. Realizing that there's more more to it than just a a fuzzy feeling on a Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, I, I remember talking to Jeff Van Vonderen, who's the leading interventionist in, in the United States, but he was a pastor as well. We had him for one of our conferences and, um, and he was a pastor for many years, mm -hmm. um, but a psychologist as well. Uh, he's even mentioned in, in one of Eminem's songs uh, in Monster, where, Jeff Van, where Eminem says if he'd run, run into Jeff Van Vonderen, we'd be able to help him. Uh, but this guy, he said, I take my hat off to you because what you're doing is smuggling therapy into the church. Yeah, great. <laughs> because, because there is an element of, of therapy and psychology that is, helps you to discover how you tick. It's only God that can heal you. And I don't believe therapy is the be all and end all, but it's a part of the, even Sozo, Bethel, it's, it's soul, it's, it's the whole being that needs to be That's um, right. addressed. Renewed. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. There's, you know, even thinking about Pastor Chris's preaching on the weekend, all about the fire and the fire of God and how we have to keep keep well and keep our, our oil vats full and, and be ready. But there's also an element, even your physical body, you have to keep yourself healthy. Yeah. It's what you consume, be it drugs or be it McDonald's all day long, that will affect your system and function. Absolutely. We, we, more and more research shows that um, serotonin, which is your mm. feel-good chemical, um, is produced in your gut and what you eat is how you feel. It affects your mind. We're doing, a, as I mentioned, Spirit Wars um, by Chris Valentin. As a team, we're studying this out three chapters a week right. and, and praying into it. And, uh, and I think in Chapter 7, um, he emphasises throughout that entire chapter the importance of laughter and then lays out all the different studies on uh, people that even if they haven't, hasn't been a laughter or the Holy Ghost, hasn't been a comedy, but they've actually deliberately practiced laughing wow. and they've overcome cancer. They've overcome all sorts of mental health diseases just because they're, they're positioning themselves. And so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole, and that's the way that you have transitioned the program um, yeah. to, to, to work body, mind, body, soul, spirit, the whole package. And you think about those times in the Holy Ghost when, and that has been part of the program where yeah. we allow God to move and often there will be a move of holy laughter. Yeah. And from the outside, it looks like everybody's mad, but we've studied mental health wise. It's the best thing yeah. that the Bible says. The joy that, of the Lord. Yeah, the Bible says that, that you know, laughter or, or joy doeth good like a medicine. Yeah. It's a medicine, it's a medication. Mm. Take your medication, boys. Mm. <laughs> come on, come on. I, I have this picture of even soaking next door and having new residents come in and everyone's getting slain in the spirit. And they're like, what yeah. the heck's going on here? Um, so in the, in, the, in the years of transformations, again, to get back to, to, to Mike, so you've, you've got three daughters. Uh, three daughters. And yep. Corinne's your wife. Yep. And um, you've had struggles, but you're very much a dad. Uh, mm. Although you ride a Harley around and... Um, you, you lead the Kingsman Motorcycle Club, um, yeah. and, and that's a Christian motorcycle club that you've started. Um, but beneath that, like, what do you do for a hobby? What's your, apart from ride your Harley, like, what's your, your sort of your passion? What's, what's something that no one sees about Mike? Do you watch ballet or <laughs> tennis? Or? I mean, you know, I get great joy out of my daughters. Yeah, awesome. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's, it's surprising, and a lot of you would, relate to this but how many alpha males you know that god gives all daughters to you know yeah and uh and they just soften me and they're just so incredible and and um 
I mean, my family really, my, that, that's everything to me. Um, but I guess hobbies wise, yeah, I, I, like, I like riding a bike. It's very therapeutic. Um, I used to love jet skiing. That mm. was real fun. We'd go out and wave jump and stuff. And so you wanna, you're, you're on the journey to get another jet ski? Yeah. And, awesome. Um, Great. And, and just, just enjoying life. And um, I, I'm not much of a hiker. I wish I was. You know, there's certain things you wish you were good at. I mean, even surfing, I'd love to think that I was good at surfing. I just don't have the patience for it. Yeah. And I, I started surfing. I bought a board and, and, and my mate would take me out in this big waves all the time. And I'd start at this end of the beach and end up down smashed. that end of the beach and yeah. smashed. And I'm like... This is too much work. <laughs> Just take a photo. <laughs> <laughs> Body surf. So yeah. So um, so over the last few months, um, and and I think you know we we laugh and we talk about like what what's the success rate of transformations and the ministry that you run? Look, three quarters of it. We we have studied it over the years. We we need to do another study now that we've multiplied our campuses, which we're in the we're in the process of doing. Yeah. Because we grew so, so quick, we didn't have a national database, mm. and, uh, but now we do. And so we're going to start to get national statistics and revisit this. Um, but over the years, it's, it's been an average of 75% have mm. the ones that graduate the program. It's a hard program, yeah. as you know. Yeah. So how many, like, so, so on the average 100 people that come in, how many people would complete the whole program? See, that's a hard figure because, roughly. because we're trying to work out, because a lot of them go out and come back. Yeah. They go out and come back. And it's like, mm. when, when do they, ha, have you you know, those people rate? from five years ago yeah. now, and then they graduate and it's just, uh, but you know, I, I guess, you know, that's, that's the many are called, but few are chosen. It's yeah. a hard one to get them through the program. Cause in a secular rehab, isn't it like 3%? out of 100 would actually graduate and complete and go on to a healthy life? Yeah, I would say that's about right. And I would say ours are not much higher than that mm. because it, it is, addiction is so, it's such a hard All thing consuming. to overcome. Yeah, they and say 7% of people that get on meth and are addicted will ever get off it and live a normal life without ever picking up a pipe or a needle again. That's speed crystal meth. That's right. Yeah. And that's why the ones that really get crossed in the heart, that's, that's what that's makes the That's where the, the transformation difference. is. But it's, um, yeah, it's, the, and some people would say it's a really thankless role. It's a really, mm. it's a thankless job. But I figure as long as we're loving them through, I mean, I did a funeral on Friday for one of our boys who was just a beautiful, loving... You, you met him, he came up to presence. Yeah, I and, mentored him for a few months yeah. recently, yeah. And just a beautiful, loving guy, but lost his battle to addiction. Mm. And, um, and I did his funeral on Friday. It was just such a sad thing. And we... I, I buried heaps of them, so... But the one thing that I know, we loved him. Yeah so much and he was he was full of joy oh, i still just, remember and worship and he down found him. christ yeah come on christ found him yeah he really had an encounter with god and and so <coughs> you know me. i believe that god's mercy goes beyond our understanding and and there's different belief systems and theologies around suicide but i think none of us can really truly judge what goes on through a person's heart and mind the mental illness mm. that takes over um, and then they end up succeeding and killing themselves. And mm. I think but he's in heaven now. I don't, I don't know if, if anyone's watching. I actually had this question asked to me by, by um, someone that's a friend recently and, and was struggling. <coughs> and they said, um, they said, Pastor Justin, it went from Juzzo to, to Pastor Justin, how, how come the Bible doesn't talk about suicide? And what do you think God's perspective is? I, I understood the question as... Um, on a deeper level, if I were to suicide or if someone around me suicided, would they go to heaven? What's your take on that? It's interesting because <coughs> Excuse me. the Bible says thou shalt not kill. kill. So yeah. that's, that's enough. Kill yourself, kill you. And so and God, that's because God loves us so much, you know, really. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. and, and because God says that life and death are in his hands. Yeah. They're not in our hands. And I think if it were that easy that it was an easy pass, let's all do it now. No, I just think what a, if, if it was that easy, well, and killing myself was no different to killing someone else. Mm. 
then let's just all kill each other and go to heaven. Mm. It's not. It's not that. It's not a simple answer. And yeah. I would not. I would. So I've had times where I've felt like killing myself, and the one thing that stops me is the fear of going to hell. In fact, I went to a a secular suicide prevention course, and they said the number one reason of suicide prevention, number one thing is a religious belief that they'll go to a worse place. Wow. Even if they're living in hell here. Mm -hmm. Because I think beyond beyond addiction, right now, we stand in a, in a I guess, on the precipice of a time that that is going to be marked by mental health, emotional, yeah. and you know that's that's one of the reasons I love talking to you because it's we're about to I th I believe, and not prophesying doom, but I believe just by the sheer default of numbers, people oh, are, we're on a place where people are about to step into a place where they're really going to need help. So on the back of that question, and that was the similar answer I gave, what would you say to someone who knows someone that's that's struggling um, now? I, I would always warn them and say it's not worth the risk. None of us know. That's yeah. the truth. Yeah, exactly. None of us know. None of us mm. know if you were to pass from here to there, it's mm. rolling the dice. Mm. And, and the devil is doing this one over your soul. He wants your soul. Mm. His whole plot is to steal what? Kill, kill and destroy. And destroy. Yeah, that's right. And so he's getting in your head trying to get you to kill yourself. But I just say it's not worth the risk. I just I tell everyone it's not worth the risk. Yeah. And um, but God is gracious and merciful. I really don't know. Hmm. And so you know, and I've I've had a lot of friends that have killed themselves. And I would like to think they're in heaven, but I'm not the judge. I'm not sure. the one that will ultimately know. What would you say to someone who 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 picks up that a partner, a husband, a friend is starting to go into depression and? maybe is displaying signs of self-harm or, or would, is transformations an avenue for, I know you're not like a helpline, there are men's helplines, mental health helplines, but what would you say Look, the I, next step would be? Yeah, I think, I, I think we're really going to be overrun with all this stuff. I mean, prayer is the number one thing. Sure. Pray for your friend, pray yep. for them. Reassurance, mm -hmm. because a lot of people struggle with mental health issues because of trauma after trauma after trauma. Which leads life. to insecurities. Yeah. And then or losing hope. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yeah. There's no hope for the future. That's why I feel depressed. Mm. And so to don't talk mountains and don't... The, the, one, the one big no-no is, is to try and fix it because of your own insecurities about what you're feeling about that person. Sure. Don't, don't try and minimise what they're going through. Bring another example of things in. Just hear them and speak life into them little bit by little bit. Because mental health isn't not... I mean, it took them ages to get there. Mm. It's, yeah, they're not going to get out by... It, a, no, so. it's step by step. Great. You mentioned before, um, we know someone's just passed. Um, you were on the news the other day. You were twice here on the news this week. Uh, or in the last couple of weeks, um, mm. Mick had just resigned from his job to become the director of uh, Transformations, got hit yeah. by a car um, and broke both his legs, his hand, and separated his, his hip. You've, you've, you know, you said at the very beginning, and this is probably the answer to the question, but you said at the beginning, it, you have to be called by God, and, you, and yeah. that's what will sustain you. But from, you know, even our conversation before and knowing you as a person and sitting back over the last gosh, almost 15, 16 years and knowing transformations, you've taken a lot of hits that are primarily coming from one, attacks from the devil, two, people's own offences and insecurities or shortcomings. But how do you, how do you handle, um, and I know you, know you present as tough and gruff and whatever doesn't bother me, but how do you deal with it? Because when you, all you're trying to do is help people and it's almost like it's thrown back in your face, there must come a point and I know you have outlets, Harleys, whatever. Um, but how do you how do you truly deal with it? And and does it build, or is it, have you found a release point? It does build if you don't deal with it. If you, I mean, soaking's the number one answer. And you still soak, really? Yeah. yeah, soaking Great. is the number one answer. Hmm. And whether it's laying on the floor and worshiping God, or it's walking through, um, you know nature and breathing and and experiencing being aware God and just yeah. be still and know that i'm god and i went through a hard season last year where it was just 
the attacks were relentless it, and it was really playing hard on me. And, and I guess then the fear was that, you know, that it, it that was the end, everything was over and, and you know, like, and, and the devil just throws all this fear into you. And, um, and God says, I will sustain you even though the attacks come. Mm. Jesus was sleeping in the boat and every, the disciples thought they were going to die. Mm. And he's sleeping. He's cool because it's, it's not going to, the boat's not going to sink while he's in it. And, um, and G- if Jesus is in your boat, it's not going to sink even yeah, though great, it looks like it's going to sink. Word. And, um, but I, your soul pays tricks on you, see, and your mind and, and Satan's constantly hitting you with your worst fears. You're nothing. This is, you know, ba 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 ba. This is the end. Rah, rah, rah. Even though the word of God and everything you know in the spirit, and it's just this boom, 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 and and eventually you get tired. And I remember talking to a good friend of mine who's an evangelist, and he said, he said to me, he just looked in my eyes one day. He said, "You're tired, aren't you?" I said, oh, "I am beat up, man." And he goes, "Does the black dog plague you?" And I knew what he was talking about. And he goes, you know, come on, do you feel depressed? Sometimes you wake up and you... I said, man, I, I've never felt it, but I've I felt it lately, a bit of depression, a bit of yeah. anxiety hit my soul. And then my spirit's fine. And he encouraged me to do this thing. And that was, he said, find somewhere just to walk with God and breathe. Don't do anything else. And at the time I was living by the lake. And I started walking with God every day. Every day, every day I'd walk with God. And, um, and I'd just breathe and breathe. And then I, st- I felt like I had to do something. It's like my nature is, oh no, I've got to get up and do something now, yeah. right? Martha, Martha, you know? And I, so I started praying for things and, and God, I hear the Holy Spirit say, da, 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 da. and I'm like, and he said, I've taken care of all that. I just want to be with you. Yeah, so good. I just want to be with you. It's that quiet, small voice. And then, and then he says, and he says, look to your left. And I look to my left and, and, the, and the lake is just still. I look to my right and there's this green sloping hill. And Psalm 23 came to my mind. He causes me to lie down in green pastures, walk beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And my soul was the place that needed restoring. And I was literally walking through that. On one side, green grass, other side still waters and God said yeah so good and so it, it's getting back to simplicity yeah. this this world and technology and everything bombarding you bombarding you bomb even all the COVID-19 and the media and bah, 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 bah. you got to unplug from all that and get back to Perfect. just breathing mm. breathing it's amazing so true. A, sorry, just one other. Yeah. I mean, so there's a psychological, there's an evidence-based best practice thing. It's called mindfulness, right? Psychologists have studied it. Yeah, sure. And God was God was the inventor of it, <laughs> because Adam <coughs> walked with God in the cool of the day. <laughs> Amen. That's good. Yeah. And when it was outside of walking with God that he was tempted. Yeah. Wow. So that's um that's what keeps you going through this um, and, and the other thing is that that you mentioned the calling before i can't quit mm. when, when you're paul says i'm in chains for the gospel mm. like i literally i can't not do it i can't do it I, or you know i can't do it without him it's like when you're really called you can't quit it's not an option because it's my life's mission yeah, it's literally great. my life's mission great Take everything away, the organisation, the buildings, everything. I'll be walking around with the homeless, talking to them, encouraging them. I love it. Come on. So I think that, that that's one question I've got here, and uh, we'll finish up in a couple of minutes. But what's the plan for the future? What is, you know, I, was, I, I actually left Gary's last night, and it was like I, I was thinking bigger vision for some reason. Maybe that's what Gary does. Mm. And... Uh, you showed us some plans and things like that and, and you know it's one thing to think of okay in the year we're going to do a foyer and a playground and things we're talking about but what's what's the next four or five six years look like for, for transformations and Pastor Mike Barrett Should so I guess evangelist Mike Barrett yeah well that's yeah that, that's the thing is that uh, my heart's for souls and, and uh, there's I guess two streams of my ministry number one is 
to encourage the body of Christ to go after souls, mm -hmm. especially the broken ones. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, um, you know, to build this organisation called Transformation So I Leave a Legacy when I've left. And so at the moment we're building in this infrastructure because it has really been based on me. Sure. And if, if I if did fall there, over, it, falls apart. It, would be, it would probably not go on any further. And I guess I really, that breaks my heart when a ministry dies with the person, mm. you know what I mean? Because it's just based on one person. Yeah. They haven't raised up people underneath them. Mm. The Bible says that Moses raised up Joshua, but Joshua, Joshua didn't raise up anybody. And mm. then there was a whole generation that knew not the Lord, you know? Yeah, well. And so even though Joshua was an incredible leader, he failed in that. You know, interesting, yeah. You, we always mm. got to recreate ourselves, yeah. and 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 I was trying to do that, but just based on individuals trying to follow me, and I had general managers that burnt out in the process trying to keep up with me. Yeah, sure. And um, and then um, so it's got to be based on a system. So you can build it off individuals, but then it's got to be based on a system. And so we're building those systems, systems in, a place. in a place. And like I said, we grew too quick, and that caused a lot of heartache for me. You know, because no one likes loss or the the sense of loss or, and 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 because personalities are involved and people, there's always a, a tearing and a breaking that breaks your heart and hurts you in the process. And God can reconcile that and and, and mend it, but it's yeah. it's painful in the process. Yeah, that's right. And so we can run ahead and do all these things. And, and so I don't want any more Ishmaels as, as far as, and not to say that you know anything. Is like that. I just I, I wanna I wanna stay in God's timing for everything Perfect. now. And um and so we're 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 building the foundation for the future. We've got a lot of churches interested in the United States. Mm -hmm. I've got I've got a church in California, um uh, Harlingen, Texas, Houston, Texas, and um Tampa, Florida that would love to see the program develop there. We have set up um, Transformations Program USA as a charity over there, mm. um, what they call a 501c3. So we're getting things in place to start it in the States. Um, we've had interest from Auckland um, about starting it there. Um, we've had interest from many other places in Australia. And it's kind of like just keeping the pots on the boil and until such times as the, God's timing and then it, it takes off. And so but at the moment, we're really consolidating, not to say that we wouldn't start something else. Um, but yeah, it's been a, a period of consolidation to build that structure really strong. Awesome. Well, I, uh, as I say every week, I appreciate what you do. I appreciate you and, uh, and Corinne. And uh, we as a community are praying for you guys as well and, um, and for all of our family. Uh, there's been distance in the conversation, but we've started supporting um, as a church uh, on an entry level, I think, um, on, a, on a weekly basis and uh, made a commitment there and we want to do that. And we are so appreciative. Above and beyond going forward. That's so good. You know, I mean, we just want to partner hand in hand for the kingdom, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's um, right. And, and uh, Quinn and I very much still feel a part of this family and part of this house too. And, and um, you know, whenever we come, we're just seeing, you know, people we pretty much grew up with, you know. Yeah, and, awesome. and, uh and so, yeah, it's, it's still this real sense of home here, and I love what you're doing. I mean, I just, I just watch that continuation of the theme and the DNA and the heartbeat of what this church is called to do, and that's the presence of God and restoring people and just the feel of the, the, feel of the culture of this place now. It's, it's so free. Yeah, that would awesome. be the best way I could describe it. It's just free. You can be free in our father's house. You can be. You can be. There's a fight that goes for that. I'm sure there is, bro. We all have our battles. And so, but we you know. we love it. We love it. And, well, and, religion. And like you said, as long yeah. as you stay in your lane, hmm. then everything else will fall off. Yeah. Hmm. Religion is always fighting against that, that freedom because, yeah. you know, but Jesus called us to be free. You yeah. Know? It's for freedom, you've been set free. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I love it. Like you, you described your, your experience with the, the presence of God. Um, and and coming into church and and then you've alluded to to the same way that you get your substance and you renew yourself and you refresh yourself is going back to that place of just getting filled with the holy ghost just getting back to intimacy and i think i do lucas mentioned you know like his ministry now hangs on the balance of one touched uh, forever change but then the 
the renewing and uh, and and knowing the community, the team, the pastors, the DNA um, that we have, and especially probably that I surround myself more with. And and as we go forward, you know, speaking of Dave Hall, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, and uh, and just looking for for people that carry that same mantle and DNA. Yeah. And I think that's that's one key I shared in the prayer meeting this morning. It's you know they say. Uh, Actually, it was one of the boys who did a devotional when I was first visiting. I hang out with Transformations each week now, and uh, and he shared a devotional, uh, Proverbs 17, uh, I think it's 17, and that's uh, uh, friends you'll have forever. This is my paraphrase, but a brother is born for a time of adversary, yeah. and uh, adversity, and um, and I think you know what it's uh, it's very much a season. And look, I'm about to be. F- turn 40. I think I'm having a midlife crisis just between <laughs> the whole of YouTube. You and were you. talking about getting a Harley, so that's I it. I definitely want to get one. I'm definitely a sign of midlife crisis. Getting hit by a car <laughs> did not help that <laughs> process at all. I do. I just want to, I don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to, I think you leather up just to protect your body, don't you? I'd probably be like ripped jeans and whatever. Yeah. Just go for a ride, the wind through my hair. But I, I say that to say, you know, like I think, um, I feel like God's speaking to me specifically in this season about, and even with COVID, it's 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 awesome to have brothers, and and you you know, and and, but it's it's being deliberate about building relationships with people that you know that uh, uh, uh sorry, it's it's awesome to have friends, but building relationship with people that you know are brothers, yeah, um, because you only get one chance at life, and I think that's the mm. essence of where I'm going is. You only get one chance of life and, and make it count with the people that, that not just you value most, but that God puts in your world. And that's such a great revelation to have. The Bible says he who has friends is friendly and uh, you've got to make an effort. It's got to be on you. And, yeah. and, and I, I wrote this post recently. It was like a bit of a revelation for me. You know, like, you, know you get these little moments and you tweet them. Or, and, um, and I said, in my 20s, I didn't build any bridges. In my 30s, I burnt the bridges. <laughs> In my 40s, I probably just blew them up. In my 50s, I'm doing everything to build bridges. Wow, because you had the word from the Lord, <laughs> it's restoration, yeah? That's right, yeah. yeah that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's so. so good. Well, mate, would you, uh, would you mind praying for us? Maybe there's someone watching that, that needs help. I want to tell you, uh, Transformation Ministries, you can just Google, uh, Google YouTube, you can do whatever. You'll find Transformation Ministries on online. We're all professionals at it now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the crew down there, Katie, and, uh, and the team are doing such a fantastic job. Um, One of the things we're, we're branching out yeah. to is marriage counselling during the season. Correct. Like we're, we're doing more of that um, because we're seeing just the pressure on marriages it's with tension. all the restrictions and all that kind of stuff. And alcoholism has gone up 30% wow. and domestic violence has gone up as a result. So we're, we're really branching out to try and help people in that area as best mm. we can too. So. Great. So if you need that, that's holistic kingdom counselling. Yeah. Uh, you can contact these guys and they will uh, guide you through it. Pastor Mike, would you pray for us? I'd love to. Father, we thank you for Presence Church. Thank you for what Pastors Justin and Chrissy are doing. Thank you, Lord, for that anointing upon them. Thank you, Lord, for that wholeheartedness that, Lord, your word says that Joshua and Caleb, they went into the promised land because they followed wholeheartedly after you. And this is what I see that is prominent about these guys is that they follow wholeheartedly after you father i pray for them that you would guard them and protect them and wash over them with your your refreshing presence and lord i pray for this house that it would continue to grow because you are the one who said you will build your church we thank you lord that justin and chrissy are are stewards but you are the one building your church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it And Father, I pray for everyone listening to this broadcast, Lord, if they're struggling with mental health, they're struggling with with conflict in their marriage, conflict in their house, they're struggling with attacks and uh, even financial pressures, Lord, that, that you would meet them where they're at, even right now in their lounge room. Father, as they just take this moment to shut their eyes and connect with you, that you would speak to them and you would touch them, Lord. And Lord, you would bring the help that they need, both physical and spiritual. Lord, we thank you and we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So thanks so much, Pastor Mike. Let me pray for you real quickly. I know we had a chat before and there are, uh, are some very real fires that are attempted to be stoked. And, uh, and, uh, and the prayers of the righteous avail of much. So we're going to believe God to put them out. So Father, right now. Uh, God, I just thank you for the for the DNA, um, 
the long suffering Lord, the ability that Pastor Mike and Corinne together as they hold hands in this journey um, have had to just just walk the journey out with people to do life um, and, and to see some people's lives finish and other people's lives flourish. Lord, I thank you for the gift that they are, not just to the church, but to this planet. Lord, even as we hear about transformations going global, Lord, on a bigger scale, Lord, I thank you that uh, that where we have a vision and a perspective, you always see further and beyond. And Lord, I just pray that you would expand right now uh, Mike and Corinne's vision, Lord Jesus, that you would cause them to lift their eyes Mm. to the horizon lines and even beyond Lord Jesus I thank you Father for even uh, Mm. where the sun is setting on one part of the land and there's moon on the other side that you still have a plan for things that we can't even Mm. see and I just speak I prophesy into existence this planet being touched and impacted by transformation ministries and God I just thank you for for Mike Lord even right now where there are uh, there's opposition direct physical opposition coming in from the enemy lord that you would pour water on those fires father we Mm. just thank you that the armies of the angels of heaven uh, protect mike protect corinne and protect the three girls lord and even his extended family and his mum, lord i just pray right now that you would increase them father give him the desires of his heart where he's given up house and fortune and even finances lord jesus to serve your kingdom and just lay it all down i thank you lord jesus that as he just described the 20s the 30s the 40s lord i declare the 50s to be Mm. a a years a year and years lord jesus of provision and finance lord jesus everything that the devil has stolen we call it back and declare a hundredfold increase on it father i just thank you that you have the perfect house and god the perfect jet ski whatever it is lord i just thank you so much jesus today i just thank you for mike for who he is and for what he does and father just for a fresh double portion on him in the name of jesus in this season Mm. amen 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 well thank you so much for tuning in uh hey we're just doing this we know that there are netflix and master chefs and all sorts of things that are are vying for attention um but if you have watched and you've been with us thank you so much Uh, i just want to say again sunday morning we're going to be back here live 9 30 a.m um Interestingly enough, Presence Church Hindi service goes live uh, on Pastor Ashuk's Facebook or Presence Church Hindi. And, uh, and, and just watch this space. Presence Church Brazil is being launched uh, and the Presence Church Philippines as well is, uh, is well and truly underway. So God is doing amazing things through uh, this community and individuals who just love the presence of God. And, and that's, uh, that's the direction we're going. Hey, God bless you guys and have an amazing week. I just want to say as well, actually, before you tune out, uh, if you want to get behind and support um personally make a donation to Pastor Mike uh, or Transformations. You can either give into Presence Church and just put Transformations. If it's personally for Pastor Mike, you can uh, either contact Transformations or just put Mike Barrett uh, in the giving details and we'll make sure that we get that across to him, uh, that we can just be a blessing, sow a seed in fertile soil in the name of Jesus. God bless you guys. Have an amazing night. The Bible says that he gives his beloved rest and we just speak that over you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take care.